Of all the tech companies brought up during the Democratic presidential debates, Amazon.com got the most scorn from all the potential running candidates. Hey everyone, this is Kevin the Entrepreneur, and I know that during yesterday's live stream, I said that this would be tonight's live stream topic. I even said it was going to be fun, we were going to disagree a little bit, we were going to talk about it, however, uh, something, something kind of came up, so I think there's another topic that people would rather me talk about during the live stream, and probably want to say to me in person, and some of you probably know what it is, you'll find out tonight if you don't know what's going on. So, I figure I might as well just tackle this here. And that is this article from Business Insider. Amazon was the only big tech company repeatedly called out by name during the Democratic presidential debates. And this is an interesting one. Democratic candidates talked at length across two nights of debates about how they wanted to take on greedy corporations. By the way, um, this is a theme that is very, very typical for the Democratic Party. I'm not saying it's wrong, by the way. In fact, I'm, I've kind of come to agree that, yes, a lot of these companies are way out of control. They're way too powerful. And despite being invested in many of them, including, you know, Microsoft, Apple, Google, and Facebook, I have stock in all of them, I actually, and Disney, I do call for them being broken up. I do. So th these companies are a big concern of my mine. So, you know, I actually agree that they should be broken up a little bit. However, they put, you know, let's look at this. They particularly called out big oil, big pharma, and insurance industries. Uh, by the way, this one right here, big pharma, if you ever watch that show, show American Greed and watch the one about the, uh, the medication being price being jacked up, you'll understand why that's a big concern. Anyway, but one company which is not a member of any of those industries was singled out more than any other during both nights of the debates. Amazon, which does not surprise me. Amazon was actually the only tech company called out by name during the debates, which I think is unfortunate because obviously Uber and Lyft should have also been called out for that. Probably more so considering the damage they're doing to the middle class, although Amazon is doing just as much damage to the middle class, whether you realize it or not. And I don't know if you can hear the fireworks in the background, but if you can, that's what it is. So anyway, Senator Cory Booker had previously condemned Senate... Elizabeth Warren's vow to break up the big tech companies, Amazon, Facebook, and Google, should she be elected. Booker didn't like that Warren had said she would break up these companies before there had been some kind of due process. But when asked about it during the debates, he was happy to condemn Amazon along with oil company Halliburton, saying, I will single out companies like Halliburton or Amazon that pay nothing in taxes and are need to change that. As for breaking them up, he said, if you were elected, he would empower judges, the Department of Justice and the Federal Trade Commission to enforce the laws and let them investigate. Not a bad response. I don't like Cory Booker too much, but that's a good response. Interestingly, Elizabeth Warren, who has been naming names and leading the calls for breaking up big tech, didn't do so this time on stage. Instead of repeating her vow to break up Amazon, Facebook, and Google, Warren implied that these companies were monopolies who have been throwing their lobbying influence around Washington, which they have been. It's been it has been far too long that the monopolies have been making... The campaign contributions have been funding the super PACs, have been out there making sure that their influence is heard and felt in every single decision that gets made in Washington, she said. Where I want to start this is I want to return government to the people, and that means calling out the names of the monopolists and saying I have the courage to go after them, which is an interesting statement to make when you won't specifically name anyone. So, you know, just saying that. I mean, actually, I kind of like Elizabeth Warren. She's... I like her more than most of the people on this um, panel here. Uh, I don't think she's going to get the nomination, but, you know, I think that's really odd. Like, it's funny how politicians backtrack everything when it no longer suits them. Like, why isn't she calling them out by name? I, I don't know. Anyway, candidate Andrew Yang did weigh in. Yang is a lawyer and entrepreneur who was the CEO of GMAT college exam prep company Manhattan Prep that sold to Kaplan for an undisclosed sum in 2009. He now runs a nonprofit called Venture for America that funds startups in cities outside Silicon Valley. Yang is known for his universal, in universal income plan to give $1,000 a month to everyone at a cost of trillions of dollars a year. When asked how he would fund it, he said, so it's difficult to do if you have companies like Amazon trillion dollar tech companies paying literally zero in taxes while they're closing 30 percent of our stores yeah that's kind of a fair point although if amazon weren't closing 30 percent of the stores maybe the thousand the universal income plan wouldn't be necessary i don't know something to think about i also like andrew yang quite a bit in all of these and uh 
most disappointingly, he has spoken against the rideshare industries and did not. I mean, I didn't watch the whole thing. Admittingly, maybe maybe he did at some point, but to my knowledge, he didn't actually bring up the rideshare in this in this debate. Anyway, he also advocated for a new value-added tax on corporations that close tax loopholes on goods and services. Amazon didn't respond to any of this directly, but has been pushing back repeatedly when it finds itself at the subject of political rhetoric, because, of course, they will. I mean, and they have every right to. I mean, if your business was under siege by politicians, you would have the right to say, hey, we disagree for this reason. I mean, it's getting harder and harder for Amazon to make a strong case that they're not doing what these politicians say they're doing, but they're willing to try. When Joe Biden criticized Amazon earlier this month for not paying its fair share of federal taxes, the company shot back. We pay $2.6 billion in corporate taxes since 2016, said in a tweet. We pay every penny we owe. Congress designed tax laws to encourage companies to reinvest in the American economy. We have $200 billion investments since 2011 and 300K U.S. jobs. Assume VP Biden's complaint is with the tax code, not Amazon. By the way, they're, <laughs> they're right about that, unfortunately. Uh, they are actually following what the laws say they can follow. And that's why they get away with it. So, I mean, Biden, I think Biden is right to criticize Amazon. It's kind of one of those things where it's like, you know, we set it up in a certain way and we did not expect it to be used the way you are currently using it. Now we have to go back and we have to rethink this, obviously, because we didn't expect them to push the boundaries the way they did. So Amazon is right about that, but the thing Joe Biden is basically complaining. <laughs> He's almost saying, like, you see, you have to ruin it for everyone. Like, we set up these laws, they were good laws, and you had to come. Like, here's the most interesting thing about this when they said, you know, um, Congress designated laws to encourage companies to reinvest in the American economy. We have, while at the same time, they are closing about 30% of stores. That is doesn't seem to be reinvesting in the economy so much as that is reinvesting in Amazon's economy. But, you know, anyway, let's see what else. What else? Um, it also responded when Warren began explaining some of her gripes about Amazon during a town hall in April. She was talking about Amazon offering its own private label products while it also controls the platform where the goods are sold, saying it gives Amazon an unfair advantage. Amazon fired back on Twitter we don't use individual sellers' data to launch private label products, which accounts for only about 1% of sales, I'm sure. And sellers aren't being knocked out. They're seeing record sales every year. Yeah, no, uh, they are being knocked out. Uh, maybe not in the way that Amazon... Like, Amazon can show, probably with good numbers, that third-party sales are on the rise, and I believe they are. What they are not showing is that most of those sales are from big companies or stores that are selling through Amazon. That's what they're not telling you. The third-party sellers, the ones that sell just a little bit of stuff a year, they are being kicked off at record paces, and they've even announced this year, I did a video on it, that they fully intended to kick more third-party sellers off the platform that were not selling a certain amount, which, by the way, that's probably going to include me. I make probably several hundred dollars on Amazon a month, so... You know, it's it's good. It's definitely helps, but that is pretty uh, pitiful for Amazon. They would like it if I was making ten thousand or fifteen thousand or twenty thousand a month. That's where they would like me to be. Granted, I'd like to be there too. <laughs> of course, I would love to be there, but I'm not there. I'm just making a little extra money. You throw in the eBay money, which is actually considerably higher for some reason, and. I make pretty good money on e-commerce, but Amazon doesn't care. I'm making too little for them. They have actually said they are going to kick people like that, like me, off. So, yes, while their sales are rising because of the big companies that sell on Amazon third-party merchant um, stores, they are kicking most of the third-party sellers off who are, you know, like little guppies or goldfish. They, they don't care. Anyway, um, Warren doubled down on her arguments and a tweet spat ensued. Meanwhile, Jeff Wilk, Amazon's consumer CEO, told reporters earlier this month that he was okay with government investigations and tech, but that his company shouldn't be broken up. Quote, we believe the most substantial entities in tech deserve scrutiny, and it's our job to build a company that passes scrutiny. Um, yeah, actually, I kind of agree with that. Yeah, if you're following, if, like, if you pass the scrutiny, then yes, if you're doing everything right, you should continue. However, 
you're not doing anything right. That's why you're getting scrutinized. You're getting scrutinized because you're not doing things right. You are not paying taxes, which, again, it, the tax code, the way it's written, I mean, they're, they're, they're not just refusing to pay taxes. They, they're finding ways to not pay taxes, which is why everyone's so upset. And the working conditions are deplorable, but good luck actually getting a class action lawsuit. Good luck getting that stuff out there. Like, people have actually caught, you know, footage of these of these warehouses and the deplorable working conditions and nobody cares because they get free shipping from amazon so yeah like scrutiny they, they they need to be scrutinized more i agree they should be scrutinized a lot more and amazon should pass if they're not doing anything wrong which of course they're doing a lot of things wrong so they probably won't, wouldn't pass he also said all major retailers have their own private label brands and the only data Amazon employees get when they decide which products to offer is Amazon's publicly published bestsellers list. Yeah, but but Jeff, Jeff, come on. I mean, Barnes & Noble publishes books, usually the classic book series because they're in the public domain. But you don't see them putting that front and center so that that's the first thing people see. I, we're talking, like, I'm just going to make this example. Amazon makes batteries. Duracell makes batteries. Energizer makes batteries. Amazon makes batteries. And yet the Amazon batteries are always the first ones to be shown up at the top of a website, while the other batteries are buried. They are buried in the search results. That gives you a huge advantage. Don't pretend like it doesn't. Is that the end of the article? Okay, that's the end of the article. So here's the thing. I know a lot of you watching the Democratic presidential debates were probably a little disappointed that Uber and Lyft weren't bigger targets. In fact, I don't even think they were targets, which, you know, is a shame. It's a shame. I mean, if they were looking at what's going on in California, they look at the protests, they know that this is their opportunity to really take advantage of the ride jailing thing. And it's a good thing to put more pressure on the companies to treat their employees better they they need to treat well they're drivers we're technically not employees <laughs> technically not employees i i wish the democrats had criticized uber and lyft more i'm very happy that they're going after amazon though and it makes sense because right now people are finally starting to realize what kind of company amazon is i think we've just started figuring out what uber and lyft are so a lot of people are still a little hesitant to go after them because they haven't quite come to they haven't quite processed or gotten through the process of okay uber and lyft you know they do this to their drivers they do this to the environment they do this to the smog in the air they're responsible for this and i really shouldn't use them and yet it's so cheap i then they're convenient like you know do i want to go back to the taxis there's still that internal struggle however amazon I think people are starting to look around, they're like, geez, all the stores that I liked growing up with my family that I went to, they're gone. And they're not coming back. Like when Toys R Us closed, I think that was like a huge wake-up call for a lot of people. I mean, people love Toys R Us. They weren't shopping there, but it was like, no, we, we love the concept of Toys R Us. We, uh, we didn't want it to go away, and they're realizing the damage this company is doing to everyone. So, and they they want to, you know take over our health care, Jeff Bezos pretty much wants to rule the world, you know, he wants to take over space travel, because, you know, he and Elon Musk think that's a thing, maybe it is, I don't know, I, I think it's a cool idea, but I don't, I don't know if I'm going to live to see it, so, I, th I think it's fair to bring up Amazon more than any others, they have, at least on a human life level, have been very debilitating to, debilitating to everyone, they, it's just, yeah, I don't like them. I really, really don't like them. I wish people would stop shopping from them. But, you know, it is what it is. I mean, I think I've bought maybe two things from Amazon in the past, and every both times I did, I hated that I did that. I really hated that I that I did. So, um, any, anyway, that that's where we're at right now. I, I think Amazon... I don't know if Amazon's in a world of trouble because saying that you're going to regulate them and break them up is completely different from actually doing it. I guess we will see maybe the next debate. Maybe they'll get harsher on it. I, I don't know. What do you think is going to happen to Amazon? Do you think Amazon's actually going to get regulated or do you think, nah, they're probably fine? I'd love to know. So comment below. 
like, favorite, share, subscribe. If you enjoy my videos, consider becoming a Patreon member. It's totally optional, of course, but even as little as $1 a month goes a long way, telling this channel runs smoothly and you get access to my Patreon's exclusive blog. Also, if gas prices are getting you just a little down, check out the GetUpside app below. It's totally free, but you get cash back on every gas purchase. Uh, if you want to see more content from me, check me out at Kevin T. Rodriguez or the Entrepreneur Vlogs. It's different from what you see on this channel. However, maybe you'll like it. Who knows? And if you want to talk to me or other fellow people who sell on Amazon, you know, I, I don't know what the term is. Seller merchant, merchant sellers. Yeah, that's the term. Um, check us out at the Entrepreneur Hangouts on Facebook. And as always, flame responsibly. Have a good one.